Today, we're going to hear from Whitney Myers of Sacred Stories, a legacy film production company. Sacred Stories specializes in video biographies. Whitney has lived in Austin for the past 22 years. She is married and has two sons, 11 and 15 years old. Whitney loves people of all ages and very recently found herself working alongside those with memory loss in a South Austin assisted living facility. She is the owner of Sacred Stories. Welcome to the Listen for Life podcast with Genevieve Richardson. Genevieve is a speech-language pathologist rehabilitating adults with communication challenges after a stroke or due to a neurological impairment. Living with aphasia is hard. Caregiving is hard. You are not alone. Get equipped with knowledge from experts in the field and professionals you need to know. We'll hear stories and experiences from others who are navigating life with aphasia. So... Put your earphones in and take a walk outside. This isn't just a podcast. This is a community, a resource, and a support system. We're in this together. Do life. Hello, Whitney. Hello. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to introduce Whitney Meyer. She is with sacredstoryfilms.com. And I wanted Whitney to come on today to share with you her mission and why she started her business, because it's pretty cool. So Whitney, without further ado, tell us a little bit about Sacred Stories. Sure. What is it? Sure. Well, Sacred Stories is a legacy film production company. We specialize in video biographies. I, my background, I've done a lot of work in ministry. I've done work in memory care and felt this gentle nudge to pursue this work as a personal historian. I, I find it, it gives me chills every time you say that to me because I got into this business. I got into speech pathology for the same reason. I wanted to help people share their stories. So you and I are kindred spirits. Yes. Wow. Okay. So tell us what was your path to getting here? Because you've been in business just under a year. Yeah. No, I've been in business three years. Okay. Three uh, years. March. Yep. And March. I, I got started in this work the way that a lot of personal historians get started doing this. I had already been thinking about the work and learning more about just this this worldwide network of personal historians. And in 2017, so five years ago, I decided I was going to interview my husband's grandmother. And her name is Betty. Hi, Betty. And I took a friend with me who was studying film in Austin. And I interviewed Betty, and my friend recorded the interview on film. And I, we made a special trip down there because I knew, like, I wanted this to be intentional kind of time that was set apart. We, I knew we couldn't do it at just a holiday gathering. And I walked away that day just knowing that this is something I want to do, I need to do. I experienced just a deep sense of joy and connection. And I felt like Betty walked away experiencing that too. And I saw how much our family loved the film. And I just thought to myself, I want to do this for other people. And there is a network of people doing this kind of work. And I just started studying and researching how to go about doing it. I also love biography shows on TV and, yeah. you know, celebrities and politicians and world leaders who get interviewed. And I watched those and I was watching those at the time that I had interviewed Betty. And I just thought, I want people, average people, everyday people to have something like this. And so I've just, I've been working to create that ever since. I love it. I love your mission and your passion for it. Thank you. So Betty was your first. Betty was my first and and one of my favorites. Well, of course, uh, helps to have a little bit of a family connection. That's right. 
Now you just graduated. You took a course. Is it a course? Is it a degree? It's a certificate program in life story practice and research through the University of Connecticut. And, and yes, I just completed all of my coursework and it was a year long program. Wow. I love that. So what were the big takeaways from that program? Yeah, it was a wonderful program. I loved I loved being a part of it. I met some wonderful people. Again, more connections just all around the world. I got to do a deep dive, I feel like, into why people tell stories, how we tell stories, how we listen, how to go about listening to other people, how story sharing is beneficial in so many aspects of our lives from sales and marketing to caring for older adults to group group work and this was all kind of things i knew but i got to you know delve into the research that supports that and just why stories matter in our world today and i love the program and it really solidified and supported this work that I'm doing now. Were there many programs to choose from? No, no, this was a one of a kind program. There are other certificates in, in storytelling and the art and craft of storytelling, you know, all over the country and world. This was a unique program and I just, I fell in love with what they were offering. Wow. So tell us a little bit about the process. Who hires you? Who seeks out your services, what it's like to go through it? Okay. Well, an individual contacts me. That's the first step about a project. And I find out what they're looking for and what they're hoping to capture and what they want to do with the film. And then I give them a quote. And the next step is we schedule the interview. And the interviews usually take about two to three hours. And from there, we add pictures kind of clean it up, condense it down, uh, much like you'll do with this podcast, I guess. Do a little editing, add pictures, we add music, and we make a mini movie featuring the stories of, of a lifetime. I would imagine it's a little disconcerting, just like when I started doing this and when the rest of the world started Zooming, you know, two years ago with a pandemic. It's a little disconcerting to be in front of the camera, to see yourself as you're talking. How do you get somebody comfortable? That is. I mean, a big part of it is giving people, you know, the expectations of what we're going to be doing and and just having the skills to make a person feel comfortable, allowing the person, you know, the space to know that they don't have to answer every question, the space to think about the answers to their questions. And it's, you'd be surprised how the camera just seems to disappear once we get going. But yeah, it takes a, it takes a little warming up. It takes a little breaking the ice and helping people just feel comfortable with the process and comfortable with me. Because a lot of times these people are complete strangers to me when, when I show up to their home to do the interview. But you've had contact with them previously. Correct. So you've and at I've least had contact with the family. Way back before the pandemic, before we were all Zooming. I've been in telepractice for seven years, so I'm pretty used to it. But even getting on Zoom with my parents, like they're like looking around the room. It's like, mom, I'm here. Eye contact. So I would imagine you have to do a little bit of coaching yes. with your folks. But that also is real life. And yes. not everybody's used to being in front of a camera. They're they're not a broadcast journalist. That's right. And not everybody's used to doing a podcast. So yeah, I mean it's well, just, yeah. it's, it's it's helping people feel comfortable with the with the medium that we're using. And you know, we have to do some some appearance things too and want want the folks to look their very best on camera and you know, they want that and so do I for them. And so we do some shifting around throughout. We take breaks and I really try to follow the person's lead as we're going through the process. You're a natural at it. I mean, I'm just sitting here talking to you like we'd just be talking on Zoom because I can see you. We're talking. It's it's terrific. I'm visualizing the setup. 
whether it's inside or outside and you've got a camera angle and I just think it's super fun. It's got to be fun for the person to go through it once they get past that original nervousness. And the big question everybody wants to know before we start is what questions am I going to be asking? So like when I do talk with the person before I interview them, that's the question. They want to know, what are you going to ask? Because right. they don't want to be caught off guard. And um, I like to give categories of questions. I try not to give the actual questions because I really do want it to be natural. Yeah. And, and organic to use your word that you used with me earlier, but just, I love that. I want it to be a conversation and me just being naturally curious and asking the person questions about their life. But I try to give them some guidance on what we're going to be talking about. And then again, when we start, I make sure they understand, you know, anything, this is your interview. This is, this is your time. And if there's anything you don't want to answer, you don't have to. And Certainly when we get to the end, I say, you know, is there anything else you want to share or any other thoughts that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? So I love it. Every store, every interview that I do is interesting to me. That's, that's why I love this work so much. And every interview surprises me and teaches me something I mean, I I don't know if I have a particular example to give you right now, but just I walk away with, I walk away considering and pondering my own life story and through the lens of these wonderful people, different ages, but, you know, through the lens of these wonderful people being vulnerable with me and sharing Mm -hmm. their stories. And, you know, I walk away you know, we laugh, we cry. I hear about adventures. I hear about trauma. I hear about, you know, joyful moments in people's lives, just the combination of it all. And I definitely, I walk away changed every single time. That's so impactful. I I just love the stories. I'm just so, I feel blessed that I had the opportunity to meet you, that we had a mutual friend connect us to share your story and how you came to doing this work. If someone doesn't live in Austin, can they still work with you? Absolutely. Yes. Doesn't have to be in person. I've done a few virtual films and those are quite nice. The quality of the image and sound, I tell people will only be as good as that person's equipment, but, but it works. And it's, it's still a method of capturing the stories and, I'll travel outside of Austin too. So I I tell people, you know, start with a phone call and then we'll go from there and we'll figure out um, how to make it work best for that particular person or family. But yeah, definitely. The virtual interviews I've done are really, really special. It's better to have the stories. Perfection is not what we're after. That's right. That's right. Good is good enough and preserving the stories is what is most important, a full movie production. Yeah. I actually interviewed in December, I interviewed a couple out of state on virtually and we had a great time. And then the family decided to hire me to interview the children and the grandchildren. It was 17 people total and three different states, I think, or three different, two in Texas and one out of state, but we did it all virtually just to be consistent. And we made a video for the grandparents. And it was like a 45 minute greeting card with each of the people I interviewed in short snippets. It was it was a different flavor. It was my yeah. client's idea. And I absolutely loved it and loved I want to do but um, memories of their grandparents or parents sharing just warm sentiments kind of back the other direction. And it was, it was really, really special. The grandparents loved it. They said, you know, the best gift they've ever gotten. So it's one of those gifts that that's right. That's right. Because it's priceless. I surprised my dad on his 60th birthday with a surprise party. And the whole setup behind it was, it was my oldest daughter's first. And so we had her birthday in the afternoon 
And he's out hanging out with the neighbors. And in the meantime, we set up a surprise birthday for him that evening with his long, some of his longtime friends that showed up. And we had a videographer there and they made a movie out of it. And he still watches it to this day. I love that. I love that. So it's the same thing. So I have personal experience with what you're describing. And I'm thinking as my folks come out to visit me this summer, we might have to work something out. I'd love that. I'd love to work with you and your parents. Let's talk a little bit about if someone is not looking to have a film, but they really want to talk to their, the person they have in mind and their family. Do you have any tips on how to coax out a story, how to really listen. What would you say about that? Sure. I guess, you know, it starts with good questions. And so I'd say be prepared with some good questions and I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to share those. We might put in the show notes Mm -hmm. a link to some good questions that people can use. And I'll from time to time share those on my blog or social media. I love hunting for good questions and, I feel like for my for my legacy film interviews, I've crafted a pretty good set of questions, but I also like hearing from, from other people new questions to use. So your listeners can share those with me too. But but two examples maybe of questions that that I like to use that would be useful for people asking their loved ones. One question I love is, you know, tell me a major turning point in your life or describe a, a major turning point moment in your life. And I love to ask about transition moments. That is that is something in these legacy films that comes out a lot because we remember those moments of our lives, you know, happy ones and hard ones. There's always a good story there and they shape us. So I would say, you know, that's a great question that someone could ask their loved one is what's a major turning point in your life? or a rite of passage moment, I guess. And then another good question I love is, um, you know, what was happening in your life when you were, say, 10 years old? And someone asked me that question once in a group setting, and I actually, I stole that question because I liked it so much, and I've added added it to my list of good questions. So instead of asking a person, you know, tell me what life was like for a kid, or what did you do for fun? saying, tell me about what you were doing when you were 10 Hmm. or 13 or 20. That takes a person back to a specific time and gives imagery and descriptive language for the memory. And so I feel like that kind of question is really full. And then another another tip I have that I love to share with people um, I have I have some free conversation starters on my website and we can link to those in your show notes and I specifically developed these with different generations in mind and my hope is that families would use them people would use them with their friends with coworkers just as a get to know you but I love little games like that because it can lead to deeper sharing So some of the questions are really simple and fun and lighthearted, but it sort of warms the person up and then can lead to maybe some of those deeper, deeper sharing, deeper moments that people want to convey to their loved ones. So, you know, a game makes it more fun. And I would invite people to try those out if you haven't already. And even downloading them and trying them out at the next holiday gathering. You know, the next time you're sitting around for Thanksgiving and there's that awkward silence or maybe everybody's yelling and you ask a simple question to somebody and then it brings everybody kind of into the conversation back to the table. I can see lots of uses. And I, and I say, you know, it takes a little, it takes a little awkwardness maybe like it, sometimes it's awkward to be the person to say, Let's play a conversation game at our holiday meal or be the person that says, I want to interview you. You know, I w- I'd like to interview you, uncle so-and-so or whatever. But that's the first step. And we just we kind of have to put ourselves out there a little bit and maybe be a little goofy and 
open open up the process a little bit. So yeah, and then and then I guess you ask for tips and if if you're going deeper into an interview or deeper with someone you know, helping that person feel comfortable. We, we've talked a little bit about that, but especially for older adults, just making sure the setting is right, the chair is comfortable, the temperature in the room, the lighting, you know, not shining in their eyes, the time of day that they're well rested and, and just being willing to give the time that it takes. And that is, that's the biggest thing, making time. Yes, I'm with you. I'm it processing it. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, it it takes time because you're also making that connection. That's right. And showing yep. them that they are valued. Yep. And a little time goes a long way and quality time and a little connection goes a long way. And, you know, people, people can tell when we don't really care or don't want to hear what they want to share or their stories. And so you know, just being present, making eye contact, just being engaged with the person and, and really showing it, be, really being present. Those, those are the best tips I can give and what I, try to, what I try to bring to the work that I do. I was just now thinking back to, you know, the holidays. And maybe instead of making a big deal about, oh, let's interview Uncle Joey, maybe a question is put on a note card and it goes under everybody's plate Mm -hmm. and you just, you just have somebody start. Oh, I put something under your plate. Can you read it to us? And let's all start thinking about how we can get these stories out of the people we love. Yep. And share them. And share them. And we participate too. And we play along and we share our stories because that's, that's important work too. It is. It definitely is. Well, I love this. Whitney, what else would you like to tell us? Anything we didn't cover, anything burning that you need to share with us? Your favorite cheesecake recipe, maybe. (laughs) I just, I love stories. I love, I'm so passionate about, about story. And stories are everywhere and they're part of our lives. They make our lives. And, and, and you know this too, Genevieve, in the work that you do, stories heal. They, yes. they heal divisions between people. And the sharing of our stories and the listening, it teaches us about ourselves and, and about the world around us. And that's why I named my business Sacred Stories because that that word for me represents all those other words I just said. It, it, there's something really special to me that happens when stories are shared. And when I do these Sacred Stories interviews, that, that's hard to put into words. I, I said earlier that many of the people are strangers and we, we walk away and, you know, these are these are new friends that I have. And... I walk away just with with new truths, I guess, about our mm-hmm. human experience coming to light for me. And that's an amazing thing. And and all I'm really doing is just listening. I'm not, you know, in these interviews, I'm not saying a whole lot. And that is that is the power of this work and story sharing and listening. And I think it, I think it makes a better world. So I'm I'm all for it. It's terrific. Please tell us the name of your website. Sure. It's sacredstoriesfilms.com. And I'm also on social social media, Sacred Stories Films is where you can find me. Terrific. Folks, we will link all of her social and her website and get you some tips so that you can help your family share their stories. Thank you. And don't wait till Thanksgiving, everybody. (laughs) That's right. This has been fun. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. We'll definitely talk again. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to the Listen for Life podcast. We hope you feel empowered and supported. 
Head over to listenforlifepodcast.com to see the show notes with links and information from today's episode. Do you have a topic, a resource to share, or a guest recommendation? Inquiring minds want to know. Let us know in the comments section. Wishing you a fabulous week.